I am starting some of the most ambitious astrophotography projects I have ever done. One of them, of course, is the Flying Bat Nebula. I think there's actually a squid in there after only 13 hours. But we all know that we have to get a lot of hours of integration time to make this thing shine through. And that is going to happen over multiple nights. Now, we can stack all of our data over multiple nights in PixInsight using the keyword type of technology that they have built into the weighted batch pre-processing. But what if you mess up and accidentally name one of your files wrong? Or in my case, you get your filters mixed up in two different filter slider positions. And even though you're shooting through the right filter, you named it the wrong thing. And now you can't link your flats and you can see where the problem is. Well, I am going to show you how to fix that today. I'm Chad, this is the Easy Astro Images channel, and we are gonna play with some photons tonight. Yes, sir, yes, ma'am. We got a squid in there after about 13, 14 hours. Now, don't get all hyped up. You can see that this thing is totally overstretched, but hey, it's there, and I'm super happy about that. And I mean, I'm in like rural five and a half, six, five, whatever skies, so it's pretty cool if you ask me. As of right now, I've got three nights going on this, three sets of data. Uh, one night was like an all-nighter. The other night were like maybe three or four hours a piece. I've been working on multiple projects and kind of just stitching things back and forth. But when I went to stack my data in WBPP, I was actually having a few issues with it. The first thing is using the keyword in waiting batch preprocess, which we'll get into here in a second. I could not get my night three data, my night data to link with my lights. So my flats and my flat darks, they were all linking well with each other, but my lights were being super odd and weird. But luckily I am a subscriber to Adam Block Studios and I sent Adam an email and I made a quick little video and attached it to him. And the guy called me back on the phone, gave me a quick suggestion and we were able to solve it in five minutes. Now I'm not gonna say this would happen for every one of you. He might've just had some extra time that day and I got lucky, but man, big plug to Adam Block Studios. I'm a member of the fundamentals course and you know, he's always adding to it and upgrading it. So I highly recommend that you can't beat that kind of service. And just to show you guys what was going on, uh, you don't ever want to name consecutive directories, the same thing. So basically I had bat and then bat and then inside a light I had bat. So when I used the keyword bat, it was basically just throwing everything off. So that is why you can see I have my directories now named bat, but with two T's and it works out just fine. But what I was doing when I was putting my data into WBPP, I've been messing around with this rotator thing. And basically what I did is I accidentally flipped my itis filter and my HOO filter, I'm using the um, NBZ uh, from Itis as well. And the problem was, is that in the FITS header, it was actually labeled Itis RGB. So when I would put everything into the weighted batch pre-processing, it was trying to link by using the filters as well. So I got past the first challenge and was able to get the data linked up with each other. But then I had flats from that night that were shot with the proper filter name, right filter, lights with the right filter, but the wrong filter name. So how did I fix that? Well, I happened to actually be cruising through Facebook and I saw that the masters of PixInsight, all of these wonderful other guys that we, we know about, you can go and check their website here. What I wanna talk about is they came out with a free master of PixInsight script. And one of these scripts will allow you to actually change keywords, remove keywords, whatever, in your FITS header. So what is a FITS header? So a FITS header is basically when we take images with our astrophotography gear, they are basically all their FITS images. They're not JPEGs or anything else like that. So if we open up just like one of our images here in PixInsight, we just got like a basic image here, and we go to file and click on FITS header, it's gonna bring up this screen here, which basically has all of the information 
about our image and that we took more than we could ever, ever think about or even know. So this is beside the stuff that actually is inside your actual naming convention of your Nina or your ZWO, whatever you want to name your pictures. And if you look down here on filter, you can see here that it says filter type is itis RGB when actually I shot this through my NBZ, which is my other filter name. So you could run into this problem years down the road if you wanted to add data to this actual object. Uh, but let's say you bought new filters and you put a different name in there. So then, you know, you wouldn't be able to link certain things up correctly. Or if you made a mistake like I did, you know, how do you fix that when you need that data to talk to each other? So these scripts are pretty freaking neat. So now that we know what the fit fits header is and what it looks like, let's take a look at the script. So you can download it um, from that website and I'll put a link to that down in the description below. And once you install it, what I used here was called the batch fits header keyword value replacer. So basically your keyword was everything that was in the first side of that chart. So let's just open that up again and take a look at that. So that way everybody is, knows what I am talking about. So these things under the name column right here are the keyword. So basically what I want to do is I want to re replace keyword filter with NBZ because that is the name of my filter that I need it to match up with. So if I go to here and I just type in filter and it all needs to be obviously spelled correctly and it needs to be capitalized and everything else like that. And I want to go in here and make sure that I have everything set up correctly. I'm having, I can't remember exactly what night I did that on. I think it was on the third night. Let me just double check that. All right, that was correct. So I want to type in filter and NBZ and click OK. And then it's going to bring up and say, hey, what are you talking about? Which ones do you want to fix? Now you can either create a new directory and copy and paste these, do whatever you want. I created one named Fix Light, but I don't really need to do that anymore. I just know that I need to fix all of these files because they all have itis rgb in them instead of nbz and now it's going to go through and it is going to rewrite and fix every one of the fits headers on that page so that way now we can throw them into wbpp and everything is going to talk to each other and be happy so let me do that and show you what i'm talking about well, maybe some of you guys want to actually see this because you don't really get to see a lot of people do the way to beach batch pre-processing stuff very much anymore. So let's see, I'm going to go and create a new directory on where I want everything to go. Well, I guess we don't need to since we're not really throwing anything on there. So let's just say that we're going to throw everything into that directory and then I'm going to load up all of my data. So I'm going to load my biases, which are going to be used across all frames. I'm going to load up my dark frames, which are going to be used across all of the frames. And then we will load all of the other stuff and use the keyword to link the flats and everything else together. And I'll show you how that looks. So we've got our biases, our darks. Now we can just go ahead and load directories and that this is the stuff that Adam helped me with. So we're going to load that directory, that, that directory. And well, it looks like we got to do it one at a time. So we got one and we got two. And when you're shooting multiple nights, this is just what you're going to keep on doing is just adding up this stuff. You don't necessarily have to make it all nice and neat and orderly, but we're astrophotographers. This is kind of what we do. So there you go. You can see we've got all of these different darks and dark flats and all this other stuff going on, flats, lights, and you can now see the whole point of the video with the fits naming is that they're all labeled here under this NBZ. So they'll all be tied together. Now, all I have to do over here is enter in my keyword, which is bat with two T's 
and click on that and now it has grouped everything into three different nights so if we look here we can now see that night one has its own flats and dark flats put towards it night two and night three and then of course we're using the same bias and the the overall 300 second exposure dark frames on everything so this thing is pretty much ready to go now you can just go through here and set up all of your stuff that you want to in wbpp of course you know we go through and do things like changing this all to rgb since i'm shooting one shot color and that will be good to go and post calibration wise we're going to be drizzling and then you know we're going to do a combined rgb image and you can see that i'm at six hours and 35 minutes that's that actually a lot less than i said at the beginning of the video so we would be good to go here we just click run if we click our diagnostics we can see that everything is happy and that is it that is multi-night imaging how to fix mistakes how to recover data from mistakes and everything else all in one so hopefully that helps some of you guys out check out those scripts link in the description below we'll talk to you guys later peace